You guys have closed over 6,000 transactions. That's nearly a, a billion dollars in sales. Is that true? Yes, that is. That, that is, is true. Unbelievable. Hear his story, I think it's so important. It's tobacco, it's called Pirate's Den. So excited to have a legend in the room today. Um, really, really pumped to have you, uh, Brenda Fontaine. Uh, for those of you who don't know her, she is the CEO, broker, and owner of the Fontaine family of the real estate leader since 1983. Um, in addition to that, she's also an amazing author. I've actually read her awesome book, uh, The Limitless Real Estate Leader. Highly recommend that you guys check out this book, uh, especially for those of you who want to be involved in reality, but also even direct sales in general. I think mm -hmm. it's just a phenomenal book for that. Um, and I know Gabe, you've read it as well. Absolutely. Incredible book. Really great insights on like team building and working with family and leadership. Incredible. Absolutely. And yeah. I think what we'll do is, is we'll leave a link in the description so that you guys can find it on Audible as well as, uh, Brenda, do you have a hard copy of this book that we can find online possibly? Definitely. It is on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and online. Excellent. Excellent. So we'll make sure we put in all the links in the description for you guys to pick that up. Um, but just to give you a little bit more about the Fontaine family, uh, so the Fontaine family, the real estate leader, received 2019's Maine's Family Owned Business of the Year by the Institute of the Family Owned Business of Portland. Now that's huge. And if I'm not mistaken, Brenda, um, since 1983, you you're, you guys have closed over 6,000 transactions. That's nearly a, a billion dollars in sales since 1983. Is that true? Yes, that is. That, that is, is true. Unbelievable. Absolutely. So I mean, congratulations on your success. And we're really excited to have you here today. But thank um, you. Yeah. So we just wanted to kind of like hop into some great questions. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to ask you, how did you get involved in real estate? Where did, where did this whole thing kind of arise in you? It's uh, well, it's kind of a long story, but um, I would I was always in sales. I always did something in sales. I did direct sales as far as like selling Avon and yep. And fashion frocks, like with and beeline fashions, which probably nobody even knows what that is. That was a lot. I was like a teenager when I first started. I was like 14 years old, and I just helped my mom. Um, but uh, it, one day, my husband just mentioned, you know, you've always done something in sales. What about real estate? And I said, I, I don't think so because that is just commission based. And and then. Um, when, then the time just went on, and I saw this ad in the paper that said, dream job, uh, flexible hours, unlimited income, and uh, and it was that, that, that was it. I wow. said, I'm going to call and check on this, because it was like a sign for me that said, I, I need to follow up on this. Yeah. And I went and talked to the manager of that company, and... That was that was the beginning of my journey. Wow, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Now, with that being said, has there ever been anybody that's that you can think of that's been like an impact on your life? Someone that's kind of inspired you, or maybe someone who's just been a mentor to you that you can think of? There was always different people, but the one that stands out to me the most is John Maxwell. Yeah, mm, that's I, awesome. I absolutely yeah. love John Maxwell, and I've listened to him for you know, many, many years, and I still do today. And uh, he was, he's been my inspiration uh, as far as, I believe in everything he says, as far as, you know, ha you know, being, uh, being there, adding value to, to your, uh, to your clients, to your family, yeah, totally. to, to just be a, a, a servant to the people. You know, and that's so true. Like, there's something that I've always noticed about you, Brenda, is that, um, in relation to John Maxwell, you are one of the most kind people I've ever met in my entire life. Oh. And and that's John Maxwell to mm -hmm. a T. Yeah. Absolutely kind, absolutely. servant, you know, so that's beautiful. I I absolutely love that. Of the decisions that you make as a leader, because like Cody said, you've been doing this for a long time, longer than most. So of the decisions that you make during this time, what are some of the most important decisions that you've made? I would say it's... Uh, we're hiring the right people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I, I have to say, I, I've made mistakes. Um, just bringing the right people on your team is mm -hmm. probably one of the most important things. And um, so I, I, we, we started with family. Yeah, I was going to say. And, and, yeah. and, after, and it took many, many years before we actually 
um, moved, moved on out of family. We thought we'd always stay as a family team. And then it, the business grew so much that it was time to look for other people. But mm. so we went by people we knew, by extended other extended family. And then when we met our family, we just went with personal referrals. And today, it's the last thing I do is actually look for it by putting it, you know, an ad in, in Indeed. Or mm-hmm. and even when I did that most recently, I actually went to one of my uh, employees and said. We we had seventy five resumes, and I said, K- K- "Go through these names. Is there anybody in here that you know mm. and that you would ha- you know you would recommend?" Yeah. And she point- picked out somebody and said, "I went to school with her, and she's the sweetest and nicest person you've ever met." Wow. And I said, "Well, let's let's interview her." And we interviewed a couple of other people, and um, she she. She was perfect. I mean, she's been doing a, a, a phenomenal job, and um, it's worked for us. And other times it hasn't, mm-hmm. but it's rare. Do you think one of the main reasons why it works and it's worked really well for you is because when you're a family, you know, you at least know the core values that, that person has. Exactly, because it, it it really is about your values and um, and and how you how you were brought up has a, a huge impact and and if you're family that's that's pretty like ingrained y'all are very familiar with that yeah it's so it's just uh it's just the way it is and um you can't train nice mm. that's so true that's so true though yeah so i mean you can't train it yeah and that, i mean i guess that kind of answers my other question mm. is just this idea of like which which is the most important um what's the most important thing to your organization you know, as far as the mission, core values, or the vision? It's really all three. They're all connected. Yeah. Um, so one can't function without the other. I don't mm. know. That's so good. So of those core values, how do you communicate them? I know if your family, like we said earlier, if your family, a lot of those core values, you're very, you all are very familiar with, you're very much on board. But if you're starting to bring people in who aren't family, um, how do you go about communicating those? By just living it every day. Mm-hmm. That's the good. actions yeah. speak louder than words. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. In fact, there was a couple that came in with us, and and they didn't have that kind of of uh, atmosphere and environment, and everybody was very to themselves. And when they came in, their body language was so different the first few days because they were really quiet, yeah. and. and but now, you know, after, you know, it didn't take that long that they completely changed because they were feeling it from everybody else. And it was, it's, you know, you change with your environment and it just was awesome. It's all, it was an awesome transformation to see, you know. That is fantastic. Now, I know that with, um, with, with your company, it's, it's beautiful. So my sister is one of your one of your employees or one of your uh, what would you Indep- call them? She, independent contractors. Independent contractors. Agent, yes. Yeah. And um, she's always just talked with me about how you know awesome it is to work with you and with the family. And she feels you know I feel like people are able to be vulnerable with your with your company. Definitely. Um, even on a personal sense, in their own personal values. And I guess my question is is like what's the secret? Like how do you actually pull out those? core values out of people that are actually working with you? Because that can't be an easy thing. That is a great question. Um, I think they need, they, they have to be comfortable with you and they have to trust you. It's about trust. Yeah. Um, and not feel like they're asking stupid questions and mm. not feel, yeah. um, you know, like it's just, um, it's just a trust, I guess. Yeah. No, they, that's they so get true. to trust you. And feel like they can ask anything and uh, and they won't feel uncomfortable about it. Well, and I think that that's so important, too, because like, I mean, our whole our whole podcast here is all about finding leadership within yourself. And so for us, it's like we want to be able to find ways to actually help our leaders bring out that trust connection with their clients or with their partners or with the people that are a part of it. And Mm -hmm. I think it's true. Trust is such a big word. That's massive. And it's and it's about doing the right thing. You know, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and say it and do what you say you're going to do. It's so simple, but that's such a huge part of it. It's like if you can't trust your own word, who who's going to trust you? Yeah, always keep your word. Something that I learned from my dad. 
you know, from many, many years ago. <laughs> That's fantastic. So you had mentioned that you work with your family and we we're talking about core values. And we're talking about trust. Um, but at some point when you're working with your family, it has to become a bit overwhelming. I imagine you're seeing the same per people day in, day out at work and at home. How do you keep that kind of work life balance when your coworkers are your family? It's easy because we keep it separate as much as possible. Sometimes it comes out into conversations, but when we're on a, together on a personal level, but it's pretty much off the table. And, and, and I, I mean, it's, wasn't easy at first, but we, you know, we set rules and that was one of the rules. Once in a while it might come up, but it won't, it might be a three minute conversation at the most, but then we move on to personal things. How hard is it to stick to those rules? Was it like really difficult at the beginning and easier now or? Yeah, okay. exactly. I would say so. Yes, definitely. It's always been family first for us. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's pretty, it was pretty easy and, and I'm very, you know, I let them do their work and I do mine. So it's not like we're working together side by side. It, mm -hmm. It's not like that at all because they're either out showing property, taking listings. Uh, I'm in the office and I'm doing my thing and we have a meeting once a week. And so it, it's, it's, it really works well. Yeah. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Now, do you ever take time to like cast vision with your independent contractors and other leaders? Yes, we do. Ha we have vision boards that we do. Uh, and that's volunteer. If they want to come in to do it, you know, they yeah. do. And we'll do that at the beginning of the year. Uh, but we start talking about goals in November. Okay. And, to, oh, and I always let, you know, share that November is like the beginning of the year for you. You know, this is yeah, your beginning exactly. of the year, November. Yeah need to start talking about it now. When faced with two equally qualified candidates, how do you choose between the two? Again, I would go with uh, recommendations and with uh, how, I, how I see the personality. Mm. One of the questions I do ask uh, uh, the, the candidate is uh, like, if they're in a situation where um, they have a client that's extremely, extremely upset. How do you handle that? Mm -hmm. That's a qualified, a very important question because it kind of gives you the, it shows you what, are they going to stay calm mm -hmm. or are they going to, is it going to be, are they, do they have any, I ask it also if they have any anger issues. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> and if they have a right. hard time with, with handling people who are angry mm. as well. And I've yeah. had people tell me that they have definitely anger issues and they didn't get hired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point. And that's so, that, that is definitely hard to like, you know, it's that whole concept of like the customer's always right kind of thing. But you, as the sales associate or whatever you are, the position, you're just like, I don't feel like this is right right now. <laughs> you know, like, and it just jerks with your emotions. But that's so, that's interesting. Now, with that being said though, um, obviously there's a culture that you have created within your organization, um, which I think is a beautiful culture. And we've talked a little bit about kindness. We've talked about being patient and stuff and, you know, things like that. But how do you basically introduce that culture to new people in your organization? With my book. That's genius. That's so true. And it's so true. And again, you guys need to buy this book. I'm serious. It is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. That's what a great answer. Right? <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Um, so so with that, actually, to kind of piggyback off of that, what is one of the biggest challenges that you see leaders facing? So we're talking about culture. We talk about all these positive things, but to kind of take it in an opposite uh, direction, what's one of the biggest challenges you see? I guess that, I think that's the same question you asked me before. The challenge is hiring the right people mm -hmm. and putting them in the right positions mm -hmm. is the other, because uh, you can have somebody that's uh, and sales, and they're very detailed, and that's great. Uh, but they might not be as good in sales as they could be in administrate as an administrator, mm -hmm. you know, as far as doing the paperwork. Um, and then you also can put somebody in a in a leadership position that you've had working for you for a long time, which I I did, and she was great at her job but she really wasn't a great leader. Yeah. 
uh, because she had more the mentality of being a boss mm -hmm. uh. instead of being a coach and a true leader with a servant's heart. She didn't. She didn't have that. I ta tried talking to her, but she was. Sometimes when people are put in a in a position of power, it goes to their head, mm -hmm. wow. and unfortunately, yeah. that's what was happening. But fortunately, uh, she ended up uh, moving away, so it all worked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never worked out one way or another. Yeah, it always works out. But and the thing is, I I kept giving her books to read, and you know, sometimes no matter what, it doesn't. You know. It just doesn't sink Sometimes in. Sometimes it's not that culture. It's fit. not yeah. their their personality, and they just don't get it. Yeah. And you know, I I feel like I can relate because I was in the direct sales industry um, in the past, and it's like it's amazing because we have an energy in the room that's just really beautiful, you know. And you bring somebody who's super negative or somebody that just has not positive energy into that room, they almost dismiss themselves. Like you don't even have to dismiss them necessarily because they just can't cling. Well, yeah. that's exactly what has happened with, you know, I, I did mention that there was a few people I yeah. made a mistake on. And of course, she was great at the, at what she had, her other job was. And, yeah. and we thought that it was going to work out. And uh, it was she was only with us in that leadership position a year, which worked out fine. And but yet she had been with us for a, a, over a decade before that. Yeah. Um, uh, so, but... Um, the other, the uh, what I what you what you made me think about is the fact that somebody we did have someone that was somewhat you know negative, but a wonderful person in any mm. other way. But there was something that was missing, and I think it was beyond that person's control mm. to be any different. But you're right; they do end up dismissing themselves, yeah, and 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 it's it's. Uh, it's it's sad, but uh, but true. Yeah. So no. there are you know you can't always get it right, but as long as you get it right most of the time, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's true. So of that, do you think that that's one of the like common or biggest traits that can kind of derail a leadership path is having that ego, having that boss mentality, that negativity. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, because people will not gravitate to people that uh, don't treat them right mm -hmm. and don't value them, definitely. Now, I think I might know the answer to this one, yeah. Brenda, because just after talking with you for you know the time that we have already, but w just tell me, what is one of the characteristics that you believe leaders should possess? The biggest is the servant's heart. Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew it. I nailed mm -hmm. it in my head. 100%. 100%. <laughs> especially reading your book, I would say the exact This is like the legendary thing. John Maxwell, the legendary yeah. Brenda Fontaine thing that is said, you need to be a servant. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Where does that come from, by the way? Where did you pull that from? I always wanted to help people because I wanted to be a nurse when I, when I was younger and I wanted to go to college, but my parents couldn't afford to send me. So yeah. that was my goal. Was and I, and I didn't lose, you know, I always had that. I always kept thinking, even after I was married, you know, maybe I'll be able to afford at some point, go back to college yeah. and become a nurse. And, and um, I just, I think helping people is so gratifying. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I loved um, helping sellers and buyers, uh, you know, when I was an agent. And I thought I'd really miss that part of the business. Yeah. But I absolutely love helping my agents to be successful. I really... And passionate about having them be as successful as they want to be, yeah. and wow. it's really gratifying to see that happening. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I love it. Do you think that's a necessary change for people to go from, let's say, they're out there in the field doing the work, like you were, you're out there showing houses, you're on the front lines, to go from there to start leading people? Do you think that having that servant's heart, being able to make that mental change? is important where instead of serving the customers, you're then serving your team. Definitely. But I think you're also, I think we're all leaders in, you know, we're, we are leaders of our family. Yeah, totally. We're leaders uh, as an agent. You're still a leader, uh, you know, leading and guiding your clients to a successful uh, closing. And, and I, so I think we're all leaders. Yeah. Mm. 
No, that's a really good point, actually. And that what a great way to like own yourself as a human being, I feel like, just to say, no, I am a leader. It's the question of where am I leading myself? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the leader of your own life. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. I, I wonder, you know, I feel like people look at the word leader as like a good thing, but we have got bad leaders too, you know? That's true. And so that's really interesting. What a way to own it, you know? Right. Now, maybe this is a harder one to kind of talk about, but, you know, what's one mistake that you witness leaders making more frequently than others? Try to grow too fast. Interesting. Yeah, can you explain that a little bit? Uh, well, as far as in real estate, you know, the, the big thing is teams. Mm. Uh, that's been uh, for quite a few years now, and we were the first company. Well, I was the first agent, I, should, I need to say, to uh, start a team um, in my area. And... Um, I did it slowly yeah. and very uh, baby style, baby steps throughout the whole, the whole process. Whereas a lot of agents um, who wanted to start a team, you know, did it quickly and um, and it's it's the same thing with any business, and they just try to hire a lot of people all at once, mm-hmm. and they're not really building a strong team, mm-hmm. a, 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 yeah. and they don't have a strong foundation. So when we did it, we started with a very strong foundation um, and by doing it slowly. Whereas if you do it very quickly, it's like a house of cards yeah. and it really blows up very quickly, especially yeah. when the market goes down. And I've seen many people try to build a, you know, build a team, which is, it is a business yeah. and, and, and it just dissolved. Uh, so that would be the biggest mistake is to is to uh, try to build something too fast. Yeah, no, and I've seen that myself so much. Like in the direct sales industry that I was in, I've seen people have success very fast, like just immediate success. But then after all of this success, they start to experience their failure moments, and they just can't handle it. Like it just it just destroys them, you know. And it's that's so interesting, you know. And they hire everybody, and <clears throat> anybody can that, you know, by not really checking them out or yeah. doing any background check or anything, oh, you know, yeah. they just uh, hire anybody that says they're ready to come on board and you yeah. can't do that. You have to be very choosy because your reputation depends on it, you know? Yeah. Why do you think that people make that uh, make that mistake? Do you think it's because of ego? Do you think it's simply a lack of experience that causes them to make this? I think ego is a huge thing. Mm. Uh, they just think that it's easy and you just have to get it, put a bunch of people together and um, it becomes a team. But really, there are different types of teams and mm. some are more groups put together. A team, yeah. a team is actually is, helps each other out and are generous with each other and uh, work together and don't compete against each other. And a group just all does do their own thing. And really, a lot of teams are like that um, in my industry. Yeah. So that makes a huge difference in, in the success that they uh, experience. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I think a lot of people that come into a business don't, don't just immediately assume that they're going to be this leader. They typically come into this business feeling like I'm going to be told what to do because it's almost like that employee mentality. But when they come exactly. into but when they come into your business, it's like no, no, no. You're my partner now, and what we're going to do is is we are now dubbing you leader. All right. And so, how do you do that process with people like when they first come in? Well, we have to make sure they they need to understand that they are the owner of their own business. That's awesome. Yeah, they are the owner of their own business and. They are just an umbrella under under us, and they have it. They'll they will do as well as they want to do, but they will have all the tools and all the support they could possibly have with us. But they just have to take responsibility for the fact that the the more they work and the more time they put into it, yeah. not by working harder, but by working smarter and just following 
our guidelines and and you know coming to training and uh, being involved in and uh, setting goals, daily goals, um, and they will be successful. Yeah, that's awesome. What, what's like the most like common thing that they come back to you with like their struggles that you have to kind of reassure them? Mindset. Yeah. Mindset is huge. Um, they have to believe in themselves, but we also, you know, we're always uh, recognizing any small wins any any win there's so many wins it doesn't have to just be yeah. the end goal but you can have uh, daily wins and we share our wins weekly with each other yeah. at our zoom meetings <laughs> <laughs> i know i've actually yeah. seen there's a lot of pictures of you and your teams online with like trophies and certificates and stuff i think that's edification must be huge right yes and yes praise recognition is so important and yeah. um it, it works. Yeah. It really does. And they can always, you know, one of the things that makes uh, where the trust is involved too is they know they can reach us and they can talk to us, you know, and we'll get right back to them. And the, mm-hmm. the leadership team is enough of us that we can do that, you know, that they can get easy access to any, any one of us uh, pretty quickly, yeah. which is so important. So what we do is, you know, we make ourselves easily accessible and we're very responsive to the, to their needs because we also want to show a good example so that they can do that to their for their clients and they do yeah. you know it is it's our mission to go above and beyond for our clients and add value and and and, and at the same time it's also my responsibility and the leadership team's responsibility to do the same thing for our agents yeah. so that it can just go down the line yeah. and they'll, they'll treat them the way they're treated by us. Yeah. Wow. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Honestly, I would say like, that's a fantastic closer join, right there. I want to join your team right now. <laughs> I thought, oh. thought about asking you actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seriously. And actually that's something I also want to say for those of you who are local in the state of Maine, or if you guys are in another state and you feel like a, a need to move to Maine or anywhere, do you sell out of, out of Maine as well? Or well, just in Maine now, but we're actually, uh, that's one of our, our goals is maybe doing something to expand, to expand in New Hampshire. Yeah. Well, you're in how many, you're in, Five counties now, four or five, six. Uh, actually, seven. You're in seven now. That's crazy. Yeah, seven yeah, you are owning. Or even eight state. counties. We have a, an agent in Booth Bay Harbor, Harpswell. Wow. Um, uh, you know Wells. And you got two main offices: one out in the Portland Scarborough area, or and, Scarborough, yep. Scarborough and Auburn, Auburn Maine. Yep. Yes. That's awesome. So, if any of you guys listening to this podcast want to join the amazing Fontaine family, uh, you should definitely. Uh, hook up with us email us maybe we can put an email below that they can reach out to you or one yes. of your people that's awesome i i do you have any other questions at all honestly that last one i did have a few <laughs> questions that last answer blew me away i'm done i right. asked one more question okay and i don't want this to sound morbid i i just i need to i just need to hear this okay let's say that you're in your last moments okay what is the last piece of advice that you could give us what is the most important thing that you could possibly give us um I would say family first Mm. and um, enjoy the moment and never worry about what other people think. Mm. Uh, Just do the right thing. You know, that's, that's been my motto forever and, and believe in yourself and not be afraid to dream big because dreams do come true. I'm proof of it. Yes, absolutely. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Oh, Brenda, it's such a pleasure to have you here. We thank really appreciate you. it. And again, we will leave all the links in below uh, to check out her book. But thank you so much for being with us. I know that your time is very valuable. So. Oh, thank you. It was a pleasure. It really was.